fucking last. I am finally here. Season 16. The final season of the Dark Ages. I mean, uh, the Sharon Miller era, which spans from season 9 to here. Given the pattern we have been noticing recently, is season 16 worse than season 15? Actually, no. This isn't worse. It's not the best season ever, mind you, and I don't think it's the best season of the Nitrogen Era, but there are some elements this season that makes it better than 14 and 15, including the elephant in the room. The return of the narrow gauge engines. That's right, after nearly four seasons of absence, Scarloe, Reneus, Sir Handel, Peter Sam, Rusty, and almost Duncan, came back to the series with fully detailed models and individual voices. Let me just say, I love the attention to detail the production team put into the Scarlowy engines. They gave the engines Welsh accents. The depot set is exactly the same as the set from season 6 and 7. With the inclusion of Mr. Percival's house, they made an educational online video explaining the differences between track ages, which indicated that Mr. Percival is actually in charge of the Coldy Fell Railway, as well as the Scarlowy Railway. Well, that I didn't know. But best of all, they actually flew over to the Tallyflynn Railway in Wales and took photo references for their engines to use when constructing the models. They didn't need to do this, but they did it anyway. They knew the Scarlowy engines were fan favorite characters in the classic series, and if they knew this was going to be their final season to animate, they were going to end with something special. Since the episodes they starred in were both written by Sharon Miller, I was worried that the engines will be written in the same atrocious way as they were in seasons 9 to 12. But were they? Um... Yes and no? I'm not really sure. It was stupid of the Thin Controller to put one of his engines in charge because it worked so well the last time he did that. I can understand what Peter Sam meant by little things, but when you see Sir Handel struggling to move, that's when you should reconsider. I don't think Reneus was in character in Christmas Tree Express being all reckless and impatient with Toby. But then again, it's been so long since I've last seen these guys in their proper characters. But at least he was thinking about the other engines, and not himself. So, that's something. But my biggest problem with the narrow gauge engine's appearances is that... They hardly got any. Literally, the only narrow gauge focused episodes this season are Don't Bother Victor and The Christmas Tree Express. That's it. That was literally all they got. And they were both at the very end of the season, too. Hell, the first one was released in March, and the second one didn't get released until Christmas Day. Nine months later. Well, the UK version anyway. I appreciate Milkshake doing a seasonal release with this one, but that meant we only had one narrow gauge episode to please ourselves with until then. Just one! What in the hell happened? Well, I think I know the reason why. I've neglected to address this production kerfuffle until now, because I think Season 16 and the Scarlowy Engines is the best reason to bring it up. From what I understand, they originally had 30 episodes produced for Season 13, but 10 of them had to be pushed into Season 14, and from every season afterwards, the first 10 episodes from each are really from the previous season. Like, the first 10 episodes of Season 14 were from Season 13, and the second half is pure 14. Half of 15 is 14, and the rest is 
is 15, half of 16 is 15, and the rest is 16. That is why the Logging Locos, Misty Island, and the Search and Rescue Center didn't appear in Season 14 until the second half. Why Bell, Flynn, Den, Dart, and the Diesel Works weren't focused until the second half of Season 15. And if Nitrogen were to cut a few episodes, like... I don't know, these disgraces, and produced the first 10 episodes of season 16 for 15, we might have had a few more episodes focusing on the narrow gauge engines, the Blue Mountain Quarry, Winston, Paxton, and especially Luke. Yeah, didn't you notice? Luke never makes an appearance at any point in season 16. Not even as a background cameo. And considering Happy Birthday Sir, the only episode to feature Winston doesn't feature a brief introduction for him, then that means, canonically, Blue Mountain Mystery takes place before season 16, where they do give him an introduction. Even though the movie wasn't released until six months after Happy Birthday Sir and Don't Bother Victor, and none of the prior 19 episodes feature anything from that movie except for Winston and the Scarlowy engines. God, this is all so confusing. But besides from those two episodes, what about the rest of the season? Uh, it was below average. I did notice a few slight improvements in the writing. I mean, the narrator still uses rhyming and alliteration, but none from the characters themselves. Literally, in all 20 episodes of the season, instead of hearing the engine say this all the time, If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. The the repeated dialogue, they say, is actual dialogue, and none of it rhymes. Hurry, Toby! Where are your wheels? Faster and faster! I'm chasing crows for Farmer McCall. I must go. Goodbye, Mavis. Sir, here are the sounds of Sodor. No, Reneus. We mustn't bother Victor, Victor with, with little, little things. things. I think that Nitrogen's animation was at its finest in this season, and the most consistent. There is far less stock footage being used. Some sets like Callan Castle, The Depot, and this lighthouse are really nice. Too bad the latter two were only used in Thomas and the Rubbish Train and Don't Bother Victor respectively. They would have been gorgeous in Ark Set Library, and I actually liked more than three episodes this season. So that's a plus. Express coming through. Some people might be questioning, why is the Express too heavy for Thomas if he had pulled similar coaches in Season 1? Well, keep in mind, he has, like, six to eight long coaches with loads of people on board to pull, and Thomas is just a small little tank engine with a smaller boiler. This is why only a select few can pull this train. The Fat Controller never asks Percy or Thomas to pull the train because the coaches are too heavy, so the conflict makes sense. Although, Thomas leaving the visitors behind was pretty selfish, and it was rather random of the Fat Controller to ask Gordon to pull logs, and not Henry or someone. And there's this line here. Where are the balloons? We must have balloons for a party! Really? That's the huge problem Thomas has to solve? Just... Balloons? Bust my buffers. Firstly, even though the title is just an overused catchphrase, it actually fits with what happens in the story. Although, you could say the same about Express coming through, I suppose. And I do think the conflict does fit with Gordon's pompous character. He's an important engine that a lot of people look up to, and has an important job to do. And to see him with some out-of-place diesel buffers would turn a few heads, and would ruin his image. 
Although, there are still a few nitpicks. Like, why couldn't the diesels deliver the engine part, and Gordon can just carry on with his passengers? Since when did the men at the diesel works mend steam engine buffers? And how can you dent your entire buffer beam just by bumping into some trucks? Welcome, Stafford. I think Spencer was the best choice of engine to use. He's so snooty and high class, of course he would say he knows all about batteries, and he does get his comeuppance later. I do like Stafford. He has a nice voice, a unique design and power type, and I like some of his dialogue in this episode. Spencer! Spencer! Uh, oh, never mind, Spencer. I'm afraid my battery's running out again, Spencer. Uh, uh, Spencer! Oh, dear. Here we go again. It's like they were finally aware of the formula they had been squeezing to death. Although, how did Stafford make it all the way to the charging station all three times if his battery ran out? Did another engine come across him and they kindly shunted him there? And if Stafford's battery drains that quickly, don't you think they should have put him on a well wagon or something? And my personal favourite, Happy Birthday Sir. I think this one has the least problems in it. It features a really great scene at the beginning, showing us some backstory on the Fat Controller in his younger years, and when Edward was one of the oldest engines there. Not Hero, Edward. That was a nice scene. Yeah, it has the three strikes formula in it, but Thomas isn't the one causing it. Instead, Thomas was focusing on his jobs, wasn't easily distracted by anything, and he says looking for things isn't being really useful. Holy God. Holy God. God, after well over a hundred episodes of Thomas looking for things, getting easily distracted, and not doing his jobs, he now knows that this isn't being really useful? And do you want to know what the ironic thing is? Happy birthday, sir, with the backstory, Thomas's character improvements, and what I'd consider the best episode of the season, it was written by Sharon Miller. My god, was she finally, finally, FINALLY after eight whole seasons of the same exact failed auto-generated writing style thinking of improving her writing? And this was the final episode Nitrogen Studios produced. You sure took your fucking time, Miller. You decided to go to the swimming pool six hours after it closed for the night. It was way too late to improve. The damage had already been done. Speaking of which, there are still loads of bad to awful episodes this season. Like Race to the Rescue. You can ride on the rails or roll on the roads. But I haven't rolled on the roads for a very long time. There seriously hasn't been a single roadside fire since you arrived? And why haven't you been on the roads yet? What sort of a fire engine are you? Why does the Fat Controller have... a shed? In the middle of nowhere, which is the exact same shed that was on fire in Day of the Diesels. What would he do with a shed like this? Couldn't they have just called this the Farmer's Shed or something? And why did Flynn need to come on the road to fight the fire? Again, it's the same shed from Day of the Diesels, and Bell, a steam engine, on the rails, was able to put the fire out from there. It would have been easier for Flynn to do the same here. Ho ho snowman. Why were Thomas and Charlie shunting trucks in the middle of the main line? They sure were lucky Henry was traveling on a different track, and that he was going slowly. But I don't like wearing my snowplow. The fat controller has told me I must go and put it on right away. So, why have you wandered off here, waiting for an accident to happen? Who in their right mind would build a snowman in the middle of a siding, near some busy railway lines, where nobody could see it? 
I will hide here. Henry will never see me now. Yes, he would. Your purple paint sticks out against the snowy background, and you aren't small enough to hide away behind the trucks. In fact, look here. Henry is straight up looking in the direction where Charlie is. He seriously didn't see a single speck of purple right there? And is Henry really that frightened of a talking snowman when the worst thing it does is tell cringy jokes? When his mouth doesn't even move when he talks. Thomas and the rubbish train. The train isn't the only thing that's rubbish. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm here the rest of the man. Why was Thomas the one asked to be Whiff's back engine and not, ooh, um, Scruff, the other rubbish engine? I was hoping to have tea with Lady Hat. But Spencer is far too busy with the Duke of Boxford, and now I won't be able to go. If Spencer is too busy to take you anywhere, then how did you get to Marin? How did you get to Wellsworth? How did you get to this level crossing? Wait, wait a minute! The Duchess is with Lady Hat next to the Fat Controller's car. Why didn't Lady Hat just pick up the Duchess in the car? Oh wait, if she did, then there wouldn't have been a plot. And what is the plot? Thomas is trying to smell sweet in order to please the Duchess. So not only is he abandoning his job again, but he seriously thinks he can smell sweet just by puffing past the bakery, fields of flowers, and the sea of all things. Despite the fact that Thomas has much stronger smells of coal and smoke. This is like the most pointless episode ever. Sold or Surprise Day. What, was April Fool's Day just as inappropriate a name for you writers as Christmas? Because that's basically what this is. It's an April Fool's Day story. My turn to make you laugh now, Charlie. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Thomas! Go home, Charlie. Just... just go home. Also, I'm pretty sure the fireworks wouldn't have ignited just by throwing them onto the ground. Don't they need fire to set them off? Isn't that why they're called fireworks? Emily's Winter Party Special. My hat! Come back! Oh dear, oh dear! I can't go to the party without my hat! Um, why not just buy another hat? After all, you were the one that said that heartwarming line. I can find another hat, but I'll never find another Thomas. And despite you saying that you won't go without your hat, you went to the party without the hat anyway. I will find your hat. I am very good at finding things. Since when was that ever established? The sun has almost set. If I collect the present train now, it will save me time later. What in the fuck? You keep on boasting that you're going to find the hat, but then you sneak off and get decorated, even when you still haven't found it? This is the equivalent of a child sneaking into his parents' bedroom and opening up his presents the day before his birthday. And how do you know that's the Fat Controller's hat on the snowman? He's not the only person on Sodor who wears a top hat, I'm pretty sure. And my least favorite, Percy and the Monster of Brandom. This definitely feels like a season 15 episode because of how awfully written it is. First of all, what does this monster look like? It was tall, like a tower. It turned and it twisted. It croaked and it creaked. It's tall, it turns, and it's located at Brandom. Yeah, it's either gonna be Big Mickey or Cranky. And guess what? It is Cranky! Not only was this so stupid since everyone knows where Cranky is, but Salty just wasted our entire time with something he didn't need to do. There was no reason for him to tell Percy this riddle other than just to scare him. 
dickhead. And even if the monster wasn't cranky, Percy searches for the monster of Brandom outside of Brandom Docks. There are other problems and bad episodes this season, but... I'm not going to address them here. If you want more details, positives, and negatives about not just Season 16, but the Nitrogen Era as a whole, I would highly recommend the Season 16 reviews from De Wilsonator, or as he was famously known back in 2012, Miss Oliver and Blossom. He used to have other opinions on the Thomas franchise in his Q&A videos, but he unfortunately sent them to to private for his own reasons. But his season 16 reviews still hold up, and they hold a lot of good points even nearly 10 years later. Again, I know it's a nitpick, but uh, why are you constantly using Rocky to clear up all your messes? Isn't there like another crane that can help you? What was his name? Oh yeah, Harvey! Harvey?! <laughs> And finally, the single song for season 16 is Thomas and Percy. It's really nice. Once again, the lyrics are as simple as the writing in a normal episode, but it's the music that makes it good. It sounds like a swinging rock and roll song from the 50s and 60s, really reflective of the supposed time period the show takes place in. Thomas and Percy, best friends you see. The Dark Ages are finally done! What did I think of the Nitrogen Era as a whole? Well, I'm just gonna say it. I honestly prefer watching the Nitrogen seasons than seasons 9 to 11. You can shoot me all you want. But that is my opinion. Look, I do understand why everyone in the fandom considers the Nitrogen Era as the worst era of the show. The narrator uses alliteration way too much, half of the characters' dialogue is unnecessary rhyming, the characters themselves have been butchered in terms of their personalities, the animation could have been better, the tired three strikes formula is in every single episode, the stories were overly simple and used the same same moral, and there is way too much focus on Thomas, and not enough focus on the rest of the Steam Team, or any new characters. But, here's the thing. The hit era suffered from nearly the same problems, but certain elements made it more boring to sit through. I was struggling to sit through seasons 9 to 11, and hell, I straight up gave up halfway through season 11 because of the repetitive formula and the character blunders, simple stories, and the uses of alliteration, but was made even more boring because of the narrator voicing every character, the music being reused constantly, and the model work was getting lazier and less interesting. I felt as if I was watching the same exact episode over and over and over again with no end in sight. The Nitrogen Era, on the other hand, had CGI animation, meaning that they could do a lot more than what they could do with the models. The songs, and some cases of background music, were much better. Certain elements from the movies were carried over into the show, so it gave us a reason to watch them, and had some resemblance of continuity. All of the new characters they introduced stayed on the show and appeared 
appeared regularly and not just introduced, made a few cameos, and then were erased from existence. And the voice acting was really refreshing to hear, and some of it fit the characters really well. I mean, I would rather listen to this for 80 episodes. I am the cleanest and brightest red engine on Sodor. Then listen to this. Have you seen the new <laughs> engine yet? Shut up! This is what I can see. Thomas and Friends is a television show. A television show is a form of entertainment. Something to keep you entertained if you're in a bad mood or if you have nothing to do. The opposite of entertaining is boring. Seasons 9 to 11 are boring. Seasons 13 to 16 is also boring, but they are more entertaining than seasons 9 to 11 because of the new elements they added in, like the CGI and the voice acting and etc. I'm pretty sure this statement will fall on its face and will be wrong later on, but that is what I see when I compare the HIT era to the Nitrogen era. That is honestly how I feel. Eight whole seasons of awful episodes. 180 of them. Do you know what I really miss? The days when the show was good. When the crew was consistent with everything. When they remembered the characters, personalities and lore that they came up with. When it was heavily inspired by the original source material. When the visuals were beautiful. When the writing had effort put into it. When episodes were focusing on other characters besides the main cast. When Percy delivered the mail during the night. When Toby and Henry weren't onto whim when Thomas wasn't a selfish brainless idiot, when Edward was the best character on the show, when Henry didn't need special coal anymore. I, I just... <sighs> when is there ever going to be the day that the show is going to feel like the classic series again? When they are actually going to put effort into the writing. When the show is actually going to be a great show to watch. Henry's broken down. Don't tell me he needs special coal again. No, Gordon. That was fixed years ago. We are finally here.